Okay, so hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to pull live cryptocurrency prices using Python. Background. Some of you commented that a certain library I was using in my previous videos isn't free anymore, so you have to pay to use it. Now, I was thinking about how I can provide a value add here, so I'm just going to show you a way which is free how you can pull live cryptocurrency prices so you're not dependent on that library anymore. This video is a bit of freestyle, so I'm just going to start coding now and I'm going to try my best to be as detailed on the steps as possible. I might also link some videos where I'm not being that detailed here. So first of all, we need some libraries. So obviously very important before we are starting, leave a like, leave a comment, share if that really video is a value add for you or you just enjoyed listening to my accent free English. So first of all, we need some libraries. JSON to transform data from the API. WebSocket is the library which we use to connect to the Binance WebSocket API. And Pandas is our data manipulation library. Then I'm going to define some assets here. So just as an example, you can take whatever assets you like and the number here is not limited. I'm just showing you how this working for three assets here. You can define how many assets you like here. So we have Bitcoin, ETH and BNB. And next we need to provide the API, the asset name, but also the kind of stream we want to pull. So to do that, you need to add to this one and you need to add add K-Line, which is the candlestick stream or the K-Line stream and the time interval. So the correct way this should look like would be this one here, Bitcoin USDT at K-Line one minute. So with that, you are subscribing to the candlestick one minute chart. And then we are getting live prices for that one minute K-Line chart or not chart, but for that one minute data coming from the Binance API. So we need to transform this list so that it is looking like this, just using a simple list comprehension here. So opening up a list here and then coin dot lower. So because this is capitalized here, I want to have it as a lowercase letters. And then I'm just adding what I wrote here. So add K line one minute for coin in assets. So this is just looping over those names and then adds this string and also transform the strings to lowercase letters here. So I'm just reassigning that to assets. So assets list is looking like this. So that is exactly how we need to post that to the API. So it is understanding what we want from it. Now we cannot provide a list here but we can only provide a string to the API. So to subscribe to multiple streams, you have to provide the stream. So in this, this is one stream here. So the Bitcoin K-Line stream for one minute candlestick data. And then you need to add this one to the string and separate them. So you need to separate them with a slash here. So this one, and then you just provide this as a, um, as a string here. So this has to be, I'm missing the word, word here. Let me quickly Google that for now. Uh, let's see, sorry for that. Uh, ah, yeah, cohesive is the word or coherent. So this has to be a coherent string here, which is separated with slashes, all right? So we just joined this list and pass this as the separator. We can easily do that by just providing the slash and then join and then provide our assets list. And now you will see we are getting exactly what we wanted to get, right? So a coherent string, which separates the assets with slashes here. As simple as that. So we're just going to reassign assets here and then we have our assets string, which we can use later on to post that to the API. So it is understanding what streams we want to subscribe to and get data from. Next one is the WebSocket handling and I'm just using the usual WebSocket uh, uh, content here. So I'm just using on message and define 
WebSocket here, this is something we will define in some seconds. And then I also have a message from the WebSocket server here. And then I'm just transforming this message from the server using JSON loads. So I have it in the right format, All right? And then I could print out that message to see how it look, looks like, All right? So this is simply copy paste from the WebSocket library, which I will link in the video description. Now I have to define this so I, that the library knows where it is pulling data from. And for that, I'm um, first of all defining the string where I'm connecting to and I'm calling that socket. And this is simply copy paste from the Binance, uh, Binance API documentation. So I'm going to copy paste that. So this is the URL we need. VSS or WSS stream binance.com something and then stream and then define the streams you want to subscribe to. Now this here equals to has to be this one. So we are just adding our assets to this string here. So we can just use assets here and then we have our socket. Now we can just use this URL to provide that, that to our WebSocket library. And then we are pulling data from the WebSocket, from the Binance WebSocket. And then we are getting Bitcoin, ETH, and BNB K-Line data on the one minute time interval. All right. So let's define this WS here. So we're just calling that WS. This is simply using the WebSocket library, then WebSocket app. And now here you have to define the string containing the WebSocket URL and the uh, assets you want or the coins you want to subscribe to. And then we simply say on message, we want to call our own message function here, which is just transforming the message into a JSON object and then prints out the message. Nothing. Uh, complicated until now. And then we just want to run this WebSocket stream forever. So this is ws.run forever. So it runs forever. So if I'm executing that, what you will see here. So let's do that. I'm just getting a live stream of one minute candlestick data. And this being updated whenever there is a new tick on the server here. So as you see, I'm getting a ton uh, of data here and this is updating every yeah, second or even faster than that. So let's take a quick look here. So what do we have? BNB, USD, T, K line one minute. So you see we're getting a lot of dictionaries here. So to get more structure, let's just take a look at one data tick here. So you're getting a better understanding how this data is looking like. So let's actually just stop that uh, stream for now. And let's manipulate this on message function here. So yeah, let's define a global variable here source. And we're just assigning that to the message. So what I want to do with that is just to have a variable containing a data tick on the uh, variable space here. Nothing more than that. So if I'm executing that and execute that again, let it run for one second, stop it and take a look at source, you will see that I'm getting one data tick, which is a bit more lucid than the uh, data stream you just saw. Now, what do we have here? So we have the stream, obviously, BNB, USDT. Then we have a data dictionary here containing some information. So for instance, E, which is the event timestamp. This is a Unix timestamp, which we will tackle in some seconds. And then you have a symbol here. And then you have this K uh, 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 sub dictionary here containing the relevant K line data. So for instance, you have the opening timestamp of the candle and the closing timestamp of the candle. Now, obviously, when you have that, this event 
must be somewhere between those uh, uh, two timestamps here. Makes sense, right? Because you have one minute candlestick data, then you have um, uh, then you have uh, the the closing timestamp, which is one minute later, and the live ticks are just somewhere in between or exactly on these timestamps here. All right, then some more information. So the opening price of that candlestick, so the price on that timestamp, the close uh, price, so the price on, and this is important, on this timestamp, on the event timestamp, and then some more information. So for instance, X is, is this candle closed, and some more information here, right? Volume, uh, which is not important for now. Okay. So now let's do some data transformations here so that we actually only getting what we're interesting, uh, interested in for now. So for instance, I'm only interested in the close price. So to get the live price of my coins, right? So I have to extract C from that dictionary here or that JSON object. And I also have to extract my event timestamp to know when exactly I'm getting those this close price. I also want to have the symbol because I'm pulling multiple symbols and I want to see for which symbol on which time am I getting a certain price. So let's do that within a function here. So let's just call that manipulation and this is taking a certain source here. Now we're doing it step by step. Let's start with relevant data. And my relevant data is my close price here, right? So we have to get into this JSON object source, which is a Python dictionary, as we were using the JSON loads function. So this is a uh, dictionary, as you see. So you have the source data, so your dictionary, and then you want to have data to get on this level of the dictionary. And then you are in this part of the dictionary here. And then you want to have the K level of this dictionary. So you're going on K, data K, and then you want to extract the close price. So you again extract the C here. And with that, you're simply getting this close price currently formatted as a string value, as you see, we are tackling that in some seconds. Next, you want to have the event time. And the event time is simply source, data, and then the capital E here, right? So source, data, capital E. This one is a Unix timestamp and we want to convert that to a human readable timestamp. So we are using pandas to daytime here to transform that and then pass the unit as ms. So this will simply transform this Unix formatted timestamp into a, Unix, a human readable timestamp, sorry. Okay, so next we wanna create a data frame out of those two things. So I have my close price and I have my went time. Now I wanna have a nice data frame containing my event time as a column and my close price as a column. So I'm defining the F here, use the data frame constructor from pandas, provide my relevant data, which is my close price, and then define my columns and are very important, my column names or my column name should be the symbol name so that I know which of these prices are actually assigned to what coin. So I have to pull the symbol name from the stream. So I'm extracting source again, data, and then S. So I have in this case BNB USDT. So source, data, and then S. Now you have to call the columns co um, argument here as a collection. So I'm just transforming that to a list here, nothing more than that. Then I need the index of my data frame, which is my event timestamp here. So I'm just defining index as event time and same story. You have to call it as a collection here. So I'm just transforming that to list here, right? So this will 
create a data frame and my index currently doesn't have a name. So I'm just going to call my index, so index.name as timestamp, as it simply has no name currently. So I'm just giving it a name, which is the timestamp. Okay, so I have a data frame containing the event time as the index and the close price as the column values, right? Now the close price as set is currently string formatted, but we wanna have it in a numerical value. So what I'm doing is I'm simply taking my data frame and define the type as float. So with that, I'm transforming the string formatted value into a floating type value. As I also wanna have my timestamp index as a column, I'm just resetting the index of that data frame. So to get a data frame containing um, the timestamp column as when exactly that price was happening and the price and the column name as the coin. So I see for which coin that price I'm getting. Now let's print out the data frame. And if you wanna work with it later on, which we will dependent on um, the interest on this video. So we can use some data analysis on it. So we can import this to an SQL database and do some live price analysis as, as I did in the previous videos. But for now I'm printing it out so we can actually call this function in our WebSocket stream and see what we're getting. And we are also returning it so that we can work with this data frame. So we're getting an object of this function. Now let's execute that. And now let's test that on our source here, right? So expectation would be that we are getting a data frame containing a column name, BNB USDT, a close value of this one here, and a timestamp of this one here, whatever that is in human readable timestamp. So manipulation, manipulation source. So you see, as I have a print and a return, I'm getting two outputs here. So you see, I'm getting a timestamp column containing the timestamp. So today, uh, roughly half past four here, and then BNB and the price of BNB. Now let's bring that all together. So now we're just going to call this function manipulation within the on message. Uh, function here. So we are getting rid of all unnecessary things here. So we have a message and then we want to call our manipulation manipulation function on our message. That, that's already it. So what this is doing now when I'm starting the WebSocket is doing this um, transformation you just saw on one data tick on every live data tick, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to start the stream here and you will see that I'm getting this super convenient, super easy to read live price data feed for multiple coins here. So BNB, then I have the price, then I have the price of Bitcoin, ETH, Bitcoin again, and then you see this live stream. So yeah, let me uh, know if that was interesting for you, if that is valuable information if you like this kind of freestyle content here. And yeah, what we can do from now on, as already mentioned, you can just uh, take this, import that to a database and then do, do some live price analysis. That's pretty cool. But you can do much, much more with that. So let me know if you're interested in that. And I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Cheers, bye bye.